Doug here with my occasional co-host, Chaz. Hey, everybody. Thank you for having me on the show today. Yes. I'm not only excited because we're having this really weird month where we've had like three different deliveries that have all been backlogged due to th things being pre-ordered or out of stock and they've all come in at the same time. So we're going to be opening up one of those boxes, but we're also going to be doing it on this brand new table that it appears that you have discovered. We have a brand new member of the Pair of Dice Paradise team, this non-wobbly stable table. But it's so wobbly. Anything wobbles if you wobble it. Not everything. <laughs> <laughs> this table is actually a set of two that was made specifically for our channel by another YouTuber who does woodworking uh, called Cy Mars, who has a uh, size Link corner. right here. So Sai does a lot of artistic woodworking and intarsia on her channel, and she's also my sister and your aunt. Yep. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Did you notice the dice that she put on here? They're kind of a toner overlay that she put on. Do you know what the significance of these dice are? Do you look cool? <laughs> well, there's, there's that, sure. But also, the dice are 9, 5, 1, 4, or September 5th, 2014, the date of the very first pair of Dice Paradise YouTube video. You know what else is cool? The fact that we received another board game delivery that we've been waiting for for a couple of months. Do you know where it is? You mean this one? So what we're gonna do with this one is we are gonna open up this box of games that we're adding to our collection this time around. And we're going to, as always, discuss what it is about these games that made us choose to add these particular games to our collection. So, what we're adding to our collection and why. La, 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 la. Well, now that you've got the tape off, let's see what is inside DOS box. Listen very closely. This time around, we are going for a smooth, streamlined, professional box unveiling. Understand? No. I figured not. Nah, just, just give me what you find. So the very first thing in the box is a game called Unlock. And this is actually going to be one of three games similar to this that are in the box. So why don't we dig around and find all three of them? Here you go. So these are the first three items. These actually kind of go together. These are our trilogy of games. Just a couple weeks ago, we went on a camping trip. And you remember what we did on that camping trip? We ate s'mores. Well, yes. But remember what we played on during that camping trip? The escape. Yeah, we escaped. From the scar Stargazer's Manor? Yes, we did. With the super annoying, um, things, the uh, pipes! So, while we were camping one day, we played an escape room in a box. Well, that's what these are, are as well. Are all escape rooms in a box? Are all escape rooms in a box? No, most escape rooms are actual rooms that you'll go into and you do. This room is a box. Technically speaking, yes, I guess this room is a box. Thank you for, thank you for pointing that out. Yep. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So each of these is its own little escape room adventure. So I got three of them because we had such fun um, camping. Now these are a different type where the Stargazer's Manor was one that used a little disc with wheels within wheels and everything like that. That seemed to be a little bit challenging. This one uses just cards, I believe. What's neat about them using just cards is that you can do them over and over and over again and share them with other people instead of destroying the bits and pieces and uh, only being able to play them once. It mean like I burned the pipe puzzle? <laughs> you, really, you were not a fan of the pipe puzzle? <laughs> yes, I was not. So the initial trilogy of Unlock Escape Room Puzzles is the first thing in this time's box. And I believe there's a second trilogy of these little Unlock uh, brand escape room puzzles that are coming out soon. So if we like these, there's even three more that we'll have available to get really soon. Next item. There you go. This is, no, next game. Well, get yourself ready for the next game because go. it is Tournament at Camelot. Do you know what a trick-taking game is? Goodbye. In Tournament of Camelot, you play as a legendary character, the protagonist, battling opponents with weapons cards like arrows and swords, deception, sorcery, and even alchemy. The more you injure your opponents, the better you fare in the tournament. However, even the most injured characters can make a complete comeback with the grace of God-sent cards and the aid of their special companions. 
This trick-taking game ends when one opponent has been injured to the point of death. The player with the most health is then declared the tournament victor. This game includes 16 character cards, 60 different weapon cards, 15 alchemy cards, three cards featuring the always helpful character Merlin, two Sorcerer's Apprentice cards, 24 Godsend cards, 12 health cards, 10 tokens, and one rule book. The list of items on the back of the box, as thorough as it is, does not list the box itself. Now, Tournament at Camelot I was introduced to when I went to the Origins Game Fair back in June. And this is a trick-taking game that didn't blow my mind, but severely wobbled it. Like, I just... made my mind wobble as much as our previous table. So Tournament of Camelot is a trick-taking game that plays like no other trick-taking game I have ever played. There are characters, there are special powers, there are twists, there are turns, there's super abilities, there's hit points that everyone has, there's poisons, there's all this other weird stuff. And and this plays almost more... What are you doing? To me, playing this game almost felt more like playing a fighting game a little bit, something like Yomi, as opposed to playing a traditional trick-taking game. Uh, it was fantastic, and it was sold out everywhere, so I had to wait for it to come back into uh, into stock. But now that it is in stock, it is going to be added to our collection, and we're going to have a lot of fun playing this one. It is Tournament at Camelot. Your eyes look dry. What's the third and final game in the box? You mean second to final? I think there's only one more thing in the box. One. Two. Oh, I forgot about that. Oh, pull that out. Oh my goodness, I've been waiting on this so long, I totally forgot about it. Yes, this is the Trains Expansion Coastal Tides. Oh my goodness, I have been waiting on... <laughs> it's Trains, the Coastal Tides Expansion. Finally... Trains returns with all new cards and strategies for you to build the best rail system in Japan. The Trains Coastal Tides expansion not only features all new cards, it includes three, oh cool, three, three entirely new boards. Two of the boards are designed specifically for two-player games, while the Okiyama map is a new challenge for two to four players. This expansion right here can mix easily with the original Trains and Trains Rising Sun for even greater replay possibilities. I would hope so! Route bonus cards are also included, allowing you to score additional points for being the first to connect specific locations. So cool, they even added a, a new little layer of fun there. The expansion includes one double-sided board, 21 randomizer cards, 20 route markers, 50 route bonus cards, 31 card dividers, 220 cards, and one rule book. All contained in one box, also not listed in the contents on the back of the box, but we'll let that slide. Trains came out originally a few years ago. It's a deck building game that incorporates a board where you're actually laying down tracks to connect cities on this map of Japan and they've come out with other maps uh, since then as well. I really enjoyed it and it was fun, but it suffered from the need for more cards. And AEG delivered by releasing a Rising Sun expansion, big expansion for it soon after. And... Then it kind of fizzled and disappeared, and I've been waiting for more cards and more resources for trains, and finally, they announced this expansion. AEG was going to release this expansion, but decided originally to release it along with an expansion for planes and automobiles all together in one box, whether you wanted them all or not. To which, sir, I replied, Fortunately, AEG seemed to soon after come to their senses, and they released all three of those expansions as separate items as well, including the Trains Coastal Tides expansion, which is now the one I am showing you right here in front of me. So that is the Trains Coastal Tide expansion, a long overdue, long anticipated second expansion for trains, hopefully the third of hopefully many more yet to come. 
Who wants to take us for a scroll? <laughs> Finally in the box, we have the latest expansion for the Marvel Legendary uh, card game and X-Men expansion. Now, I got to be honest, I got to admit, after the Secret Wars 1 and 2 expansions, I told myself I was done with Marvel Legendary. So... You lied! <laughs> Yes, you, you, you were right. I, I lied to myself. The one thing that made me break my oath is the fact that this was uh, the X-Men in this set. If it had been anything else other than a bunch of characters from the X-Men roster, I, I would have actually uh, given it a pass. But what I saw was legendary X-Men. I uh, obviously had to scoop it up because apparently as long as the characters are right, you can never have too many Marvel Legendary cards. So that's why this made its way into our collection. <laughs> Legendary X-Men. This includes new two-sided Epic Masterminds who will challenge even those who have mastered Legendary Dark City, which I have not mastered, but nevertheless. So this Marvel Legendary X-Men expansion includes 394 playable cards, including Dazzler, all new original art, 15 new heroes, 7 new villain groups, 5 new henchmen groups, 6 new double-sided masterminds, 8 new schemes, 1 master strike, 1 scheme twist, 9 new token cards, ooh, 20 new things known as horrors, whatever those are going to be, 9 new special types of bystanders, and a two-sided rule sheet. And once again, the box is implied. So those are the items that we are adding to our board game collection this time around, and why? Uh, the third Trains expansion, Tournament at Camelot, a wonderful trick-taking game that doesn't feel like a trick-taking game at all. Uh, the first trilogy of the Unlock Escape Rooms in a Box, and the Marvel Legendary X-Men uh, expansion. So, as always, we want to know, have you recently added any of these games to your own board game collection? Which ones do you enjoy most and why? Let us know in the comments down below or over on our Facebook page at facebook.com slash pair of dice paradise or on Twitter where we are at dice paradise. We would love to receive your feedback and continue the conversations in those locations. Also, we want to remind you that episodes like this are made possible by viewers like you who have been supporting Pair of Dice Paradise over on our Pod Pledge fundraising page. Thank you so much for your assistance. It really does help and it makes a difference and we really appreciate it. And most importantly this time, we want to give a huge thank you to the Size Corner YouTube channel for her wonderful work putting together our completely de-wobbled presentation table for the channel. So. Yay! Thank you all for watching, and we'll talk to you again really soon. <laughs> okay, Stegosaurus girl, what's the last thing in the box? This is not a Stegosaurus. What is it? It's a beautiful diva creature. <laughs> Do you like it? There's so much footage I need to edit out each time. <laughs>